Hey, hey guys, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Mrs. Koblitz, and we're gonna be going through solving multi-step inequalities today. So let's look at example one, letter A. First step we're gonna to have to do here, obviously, is distribute. So let me take our one third on the outside, and I'm gonna multiply that by the negative three X inside, which would give me negative X. One third times six would give me a positive two. And then I'm going to bring down my inequality symbol, which is greater than or equal to, and then negative 1. Pretty simple so far. Now we're going to get rid of that 2. We're just going to subtract just like it was a normal equation. Get rid of that. So we have negative x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And then my very last step will be to divide by negative 1. But... Whenever you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number, you must flip the sign. So make sure you flip that sign. We'll bring down our x and a negative divided by negative is a positive. So I'm gonna make sure I fill this blank in here. Flip the sign whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number when you're using inequalities. All right, so now let's fill out our um, Number line, I'm going to start at 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5 here. I see that I have the 4 equal to, so I need to fill in that. That would tell us that 3 is also a solution to that inequality. And then it's less than or equal to, so I'm going to shade to the left. Everything in here, including the 3, are solutions to that inequality. Let's take a look at letter B. Let her be the first step I'm going to take is to move my x's to the left. So I'm going to get rid of my 7x by subtracting on both sides. That's going to leave me with negative 1x, or just negative x again, plus 7 is greater than negative 9. Now let me get rid of the 7 by subtracting. So I have negative 1x is greater than negative 16. And again, when I divide by a negative, I must flip my sign x is less than 16 now. Perfect. Again, we're going to do our number line. I'm going to start with 13. I'm skipping every other just so that I can see it spaced out a little bit better. Since I do not have the or equal to, I am going to have an open circle at 16, which tells us that 16 is not a solution but everything less than 16 is a solution, so I'm gonna also shade to the left. So don't forget, whenever you're multiplying or dividing by negative number, you're gonna flip your sign. All right, the next four examples are for you. Go ahead and try those now. We'll see how you did. All right, guys, so the next part of our notes, example two, says, what if? Solve these three together with your neighbors. See if you can determine the answers. Let's go through these. All right, so for our first example, I'm going to move my 6x over here first. That goes away. We're left with negative 4x minus 1 is greater than 2. Let's go ahead and add 1 to this side, add 1 to this side. We have negative 4x is greater than 3. When we divide by negative 4, we're going to flip our sign because we divided by a negative. And we're left with x is less than negative 3 fourths. Over here, first thing I'm going to do is distribute. So we have ex minus 4 is greater than or equal to ex minus 4. Well, I think I see what's happening here. So if I add the 4 and I keep going here, I have 8x is greater than or equal to 8x. As you can see, it's the exact same thing, which means infinitely many solutions. Last one. Let's go ahead and distribute our negative 2 here. So we have negative 2x plus 9 on the left. Bring down my inequality symbol, which is less than. Then I have negative 2x plus 6. I'm going to go ahead and add my 2x to both sides. Those are going to cancel just like they did in the last one. 
39, which is less than six, that is not a true statement, which means no solution. So when we're looking at the next section here, the summary of the solution types, well, All right, so let's take a look at the summary of those solution types. So when we found that we had a variable to the left in the inequality, such as this example, or x is less than one half, then the solution is a range of values on a number line. That's why we do shade a number line. But it's not just one solution, there's many solutions. An equality without a variable, that is not true. That was the last example we did such as negative nine is greater than five. That is not true, no solution. Sorry about the bell. And lastly, an inequality with a variable, without a variable, that is true. So that's like our infinitely many or all real numbers in the middle. Um, or six is greater than negative two, we know that's true. Then your solution again is all real numbers or infinitely many solutions, okay? All right, let's go ahead and look at those application problems last. All right, on this last part, example three, we're gonna look at some uh, application problems. You start growing geraniums from seed and plan to sell potted plants for Mother's Day. It costs you $1.75 to pot and grow each plant. If you sell each plant for $3.25, how many plants will you need to sell if you wanna make a profit of at least $150? Well, I know we need to use the formula income minus expense equals profit. So let's take a look at this and see what we can pull out, what information we can pull out from this board problem. So it costs you a dollar seventy-five to profit. That's going to be our expense. If you sell each plant for three twenty-five, that's going to be the income. Here's our income. And we want to make a profit of at least $150. And that at least is what tells us that we need to use an inequality. So we know that we have our income, which is going to be $325 per plant. So I'm going to multiply that times the number of plants. That's going to be what our variable represents here. And let's go ahead and subtract our 175. But it's gonna be 175 per plant also, because that's how much you're gonna charge, or it's gonna cost you. So we're gonna to have to make sure we keep the X on that as well. And we want at least $150. That means that all of this needs to be greater than or equal to $150. All right, pretty simple. We're going to combine our like terms. So 325 minus $1.75 would give me $1.50. Bring down your inequality symbol and bring down your profit. And lastly, we are going to need to divide. When we divide by $1.50 on both sides, we get X is greater than or equal to 100. So that means that we're gonna have to sell at least 100 plants in order to make a profit of I need to sell at least 100 plants in order to make a profit of $150. All right, not too bad. Now it's yours. It's your turn to try the last one. Go ahead and do that. See how you do. In case you're struggling with this one, I'm going to read through it and we can set it up together. You and some friends have raised $250 to help make a video for a contest. You need $35 to buy videotapes. It costs $45 per day to rent the video camera. 
Write and solve an inequality to find the possible number of days you can rent the video camera. Okay, so we know that we're trying to solve for the possible number of days. You and your friends have raised $250, so that's gonna be our total. And it costs $45 per day to rent that video camera. But you also need to buy videotapes. All right. $35 to buy videotapes. You don't know how much how many videotapes that is, but that's okay. Because we have $35. That's how much you spent. It's $45 per day. So we're gonna multiply that times the number of days. And that is gonna to wanna to be less than or equal to the amount of money that you've already raised. Because you can't spend more than that or else you're gonna be in debt. So go ahead and solve that for X and see what you get. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you soon.